Hello, and welcome to Center Nebraskans, the daily Nebraskan entertainment podcast. As always, I am your host, Kyle Cruz, and today I'm joined by... Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is David Berman. Um, I am now an assistant culture editor at the Daily Nebraskan. Um, so I edit uh, all the, all the sto- some of the stories that happen, especially yours, Kyle's, because they suck. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I also write for the GN. <laughs> um, I mainly just write movie reviews. Uh, and some other just general things here and there. Um, usually, we're joined uh, by our third co-host, uh, Mia Everding, but she's off getting her life together. Um, she just graduated, so she's busy and has things to do, which we support. Um, so yeah, she's going to be David and I today. Uh, and yeah, we'll just jump right into it with our first segment, which is What Have I Done? And um, for What Have I Done, we usually just talk about what, what we've been watching lately, whether that be movies or TV or just whatever we feel like talking about. Um, so why don't you start, David? What have you been up to? Yeah, so a few weeks ago, I got HBO um, and uh, been enjoying watching stuff on there. Have, has, have a very good, uh, you know, library of movies and TV shows Been watching Veep um, and, you know, just all the good stuff that they have there. Um, but the show I've been watching recently is Barry, um, which I know you are a big fan. Yeah, of. Big fan of uh, and so I, I've finished the first season and I'm like halfway through the second and I love it. It is so damn good. (laughs) It's just such a weird and bizarre and off the wall show. Um, It's, you know, so so for those of you who don't know, it's about uh, uh, this hit man uh, named Barry uh, played by Bill Hader. And he, you know, he's kind of sick of, this this life of just going around and killing people and one of his hits that he's supposed to do is part of this acting class in LA and so basically he um, discovers acting and tries to transition out of being a hitman and tries to become an actor and it's just it is a hilarious show um it's also very dark and you know there are you know scenes of of Bill Hader doing some murders but um but yeah it's just it's fantastic um I think the second season, like, I really liked the fir- first season. The second season has just, like, t- like taken, t- took it up, taken it up so many notches and um, is even funnier and is dealing with, like, issues of domestic abuse and, like, PTSD and stuff like that. And it's just, it's outstanding. Um, I think, uh, is it Anthony Kerrigan? Is it Vince Kerrigan? What is that guy's name? The guy who plays uh, Hank. Yeah, I, d- I don't remember. Um, the book. All, the bald guy in Barry, um, but he's yeah, he fantastic. is he's fantastic. Um, I, I I know him from uh, Gotham. He was Zaz in Gotham, um, and yeah, he's just he's that. great. Yeah, yeah, and Henry Winkler's in it. He's the uh, he's the the kind of goofy uh, act, uh, acting coach they have. Um, so yeah, it's a great cast, and I'm uh, I'm excited to to finish up the show. Yeah. Um... Barry is honestly probably just one of my favorite shows out there right now. Um, just because, like, the first season it was, it was a ton of fun. But, yeah, the second season really, really bring, uh, really takes it up. Um, but how, so how far into the second season are you? Um, I'm, like, three episodes in. So, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I won't obviously say anything. But there is an, an yeah. episode that Bill Hader directs in the second season that I think is my favorite episode of the whole series. It's fantastic. Nice. I think um, I'm just about to get to that episode because I've heard about that episode. So It's great. Uh, I want to say it's like episode five or six or something. Um, but yeah, I guess from there, um, I'll, I'll talk about what I've been watching. And a couple days ago, uh, I sat down and watched Crazy Stupid Love for the first time. Um, I don't remember what I watched. It might've been on Netflix or Hulu or something. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, Crazy Stupid Love. It's just, yeah, kind of a rom-com uh, starring Steve Carell and Ryan Gosling. Um, and yeah, it's just got a great cast overall. Um, and b- the basic premise is that uh, Steve Carell's uh, wife played by, I believe it's Julianne Moore. Um, at the very beginning of the film, she says she wants a divorce. Um, and so they get divorced and then it's just kind of them dealing with that and Steve Carell like getting back into the dating life and Ryan Gosling plays this guy that hangs out at a club that Steve Carell's also been going to and he decides that he wants to like get Steve Carell back on his A-game and it's it's a really interesting movie because 
it's really depressing at times. It's really sad. Um, but then it's also got some truly like hilarious moments. Um, and throughout the movie, there's like multiple story threads that are going um, that end up, and I won't spoil anything, but like they end up tying together in like the most hilarious way possible towards the end of the film. Um, and I, I don't know, it just worked really well for me. Um, I thought Steve Carell was great. Uh, Ryan Gosling was Ryan Gosling. Um, and yeah, it was just a ton of fun. Uh, it was not what I expected it to be. I just kind of expected it to be a kind of by the numbers rom-com with uh, Steve Carell, which it definitely was not. Um, but I had a really good time watching it. Uh, it was kind of fun just watching the crazy directions it decided to go in. Um, and yeah, um, oh, I forgot to mention that Emma Stone is also in the movie and uh, her character kind of has a romantic thing going with Ryan Gosling, which was fun to watch as a, as a fan of La La Land. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, I'd recommend it and yeah. Nice. Is that a Judd Apatow movie? I don't know, actually. It kind of reminded me... I feel like... Yeah, it kind of reminded me of one of those really bad, like, films, like uh, like Mother's Day or New Year's Eve or something, where there's, like, multiple storylines going on, and then they try to tie them all together at the end, and it never works. It reminded me of one of those if it worked. Uh, okay. Nice. But I, I will look it up. Uh, yeah, I feel like, because... Uh... New Year's Eve and Mother's Day, those are both Gary Marshall movies. And, you know, I feel like Crazy Stupid Love could be a Gary Marshall movie. It could be a Judd Apatow movie. It could be... Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> written by Dan Fogelman and directed by Glenn Ficarra oh. and John Requa. I think Dan Fogelman is kind of in that, like, uh, Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, like, group um, okay. of, of, of comedians who've worked together. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, apparently he wrote Tangled as well, and Cars. So he's oh. <laughs> quite the resident. Interesting. All right, yeah. nice. Um, and he's been he's been a writer on This Is Us uh, for four years. So oh. very yeah. diverse yeah. career. Nice. Um, yeah, I guess from there uh, we'll just jump into the the movie news for the, from the week, um, or I suppose from the past couple weeks. Um, there's not a whole lot to talk about, but the stuff that we do have to talk about, there's kind of a lot to go into. Um, so we'll see what we end up talking about. Um, but I guess we'll just start with comic book movie news as we usually do. Um, and the big news from the past couple of weeks is that Henry Cavill might actually be returning to the role of Superman. Um, this has been a wild ride um, because last year uh, after, well, after Justice League a couple of years ago, and then uh, Henry Cavill was having some contract disputes with Warner Brothers, and it was just kind of accepted that Henry Cavill wasn't going to come back to the role, um, even so far that they had a Superman cameo without him at the end of Shazam. Um, but yeah, uh, according to Deadline, uh, he's in he's in talks to re reprise the role. Um, noted that it's not in a sequel to Man of Steel, but rather it would be in a smaller role in other projects. Um, they didn't specify which projects. Um, we know it's not going to be Matt Reeves the Batman because that's its own thing. Um, and Wonder Woman and Suicide Squad are already in the bag, so we can count those out. Um, but maybe like a Shazam 2 or an Aquaman 2 or something. Um, yeah, personally, I find this really exciting. I think Henry Cavill is a fantastic Superman. Um, and I feel like, though I love Man of Steel, um, I think he was never really given a whole lot to do in the role. Um, I feel like he was never really allowed to be that like classic, like American way Superman that he was for a very little bit at the end of Justice League, um, but they never continued with that. But yeah, what do you think about this, David? Yeah, um, so uh, I know I've kind of talked to you privately about my views on the Snyderverse and, and uh, kind of what I think about the Henry Cavill Man of Steel. And and that's a movie that I did not like for a very long time and a characterization of Superman that I didn't like. But having rewatched Man of Steel with you recently, I love, I really like that movie now. And I'm sad. I was sad that there was a possibility that he was not going to come back to the role. So yeah, this is great news. I think he, yeah, like you've said, he has not been given nearly as much to do as he should. Um, I think Man of Steel is like kind of the peak of 
him being actually given interesting material to work with. And then Batman, Batman, Batman v Superman, and most of Justice League, he's very sidelined and just kind of mopey and not interesting at all. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to, to have him back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even in Batman vs Superman, like in the, in the theatrical cut of that movie, uh, Superman isn't yeah given much to do in the extended edition. It's more so like they add a lot more of like Clark Kent being an investigative reporter, which is kind of interesting, but it doesn't That's... still doesn't add like what you're looking for um, out of Superman. And so, yeah, this is exciting. I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, but yeah, I guess moving on from there, uh, the other bit of comic book movie news I wanted to talk about uh, involves J.K. Simmons in the role of J. Jonah Jameson. Um, so I guess this is kind of a spoiler for the very end of Spider-Man Far From Home, um, which came out like a year ago. So if you haven't seen that yet, I guess here's your warning. Um, yeah. But yeah, we saw in a post credit scene there that J.K. Uh, Simmons was returning to the role of J. Jonah Jameson, which uh, he was made famous for in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies in the early 2000s. Um, and yeah, in an interview recently, he was asked about potentially coming back to that role. And he confirmed that he did sign a multi-film deal for the role. Um, he was supposed to be in Far From Home, and then he signed for two additional movies, um, which I just find very exciting, just because he's, he's great in that role. Um, he, he didn't say what specifically those movies are. We assume Spider-Man 3 is going to be one of them, maybe a fourth one or something. Maybe he'll pop up in Venom or something. We'll find out. Um, though I, I read his quote from the interview, and it was kind of funny because he never specifically named um, Justice League because uh, J.K. Simmons played um, the role of Commission, Commissioner Gordon in Justice League. And then... Two minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which has, has not become anything else. He just had a small role in that and that was kind of it. Um, but he, he did seem a bit burned by that in, in the interview because he, he mentioned that he had signed a, a multi-film contract, but he, he said that those things are kind of one-sided and you're required to come back if they want you to, but they don't always want you to. Um, so he, he was kind of like, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I would assume we'll see him again. Um, but yeah, what do, you, what do you think about this, David? Yeah, um, you know, I think... Uh, with J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, there are kind of a few comic book castings that I think are perfect. I think Chris Evans is perfect as Captain America. I think Hugh Jackman is perfect for Wolverine. And J.K. Simmons is perfect as J. Jonah Jameson. So I'm, you know, I'm, any more that we get from him, I think is great. Um, do we know if that deal that he signed, is that with Sony or with Marvel? I don't know for sure. I would assume it was with Sony because yeah. he appeared in Far From Home, yeah. um, which is technically a Sony film. Yeah. Um, so I would assume with them. But okay, cool. Guess yeah, so I, you know, yeah, like you said, I would assume it would be a Spider-Man 3 type thing. And then, yeah, probably a Venom or something just to maybe bridge the gap and kind of bring those universes together. So, yeah. But yeah, I guess moving on from there, uh, we're going to talk about some other franchises. Uh, we'll start with Universal's classic monster movies, um, at one point known as the Dark Universe, but that's now been completely abandoned. Uh, as it looks like Universal is refocusing uh, their approach to these characters and just kind of taking them one at a time and going for more of a filmmaker-driven approach, uh, which we saw with Invisible Man earlier this year. Um, and it looks like the next one uh, that's going to be going into development is the wolfman starring ryan gosling um apparently this uh we don't know much about the story um as of yet uh, variety described it as something in the vein of nightcrawler uh starring jake gyllenhaal from a couple years back um which i think is very interesting uh, apparently this the the plot for this movie was pitched uh to universal by ryan gosling himself um and uh it has picked up the writers of orange is the new black um so yeah, uh, I, I find this project to be very interesting. Um, I think Ryan Gosling is a, an interesting choice to play the Wolfman. Um, I'm a big fan of Ryan Gosling, um, and this isn't the type of role that I would have picked him for, um, but because uh, I, I used to really not be a fan of Ryan Gosling, but then I saw him in The Nice Guys and La La Land and Blade Runner, um, and now I'm just, yeah, I love the guy. And so I'm curious to see what he can do in this kind of role, especially if it's kind of like a weird madman, like the main character of Nightcrawler is. Um, I think that's a really interesting take uh, to, to apply to the Wolfman. 
Um, but do you have any thoughts on this, David? Yeah. Um, so I think with kind of the new direction they're going with the dark, the dark universe, um, uh, in the Invisible Man, it was kind of like taking this classic story and then updating it for modern day. And if they kind of follow that same vein, it will be interesting to see how they take a man who turns into a wolf and update that, you know, like, is it going to be like a virus that he just becomes a wolf man? Are they going to do it like they did an invisible man and it's technology or something like that? Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm really curious about this. It's not necessarily something that I wanted, um, but, but now that it's here, I think it's uh, something that could be good. So. Yeah, I think it could be either really great, uh, kind of along the lines of Invisible Man, or it could just kind of be a train wreck. Um, yeah. Like the Benicio Del Toro Wolfman movie from like 10 years ago. Um, yeah, and, and it's just like CGI, like Ryan Gosling is a giant wolf, and he's just yeah. like howling and screaming at the moon. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess moving on from there, uh, it was confirmed this this week that we are officially getting a sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog, which opened earlier this year. Um, David and I uh, saw Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I, I I don't remember what you what you thought of uh, Sonic. I I I thought it was fun. Um, I'd be down to see another one, but it's also not like the best thing in the world. Like I'm probably not going to watch the first one again. Um, but yeah, the sequel it's. It's going to be the same creative team as the first and yeah i guess we'll we'll see how it goes it's probably just going to be more of the same but with i guess more sonic characters but yeah which is what the world needs i would say um and uh for me sonic this is kind of a meme like it just kind of became a meme for like me and my friends um you know i'm, I'm really i'm pushing for since there have been really no movies this year sonic 2021 oscar push i think should start right now yes. um but yeah i mean i think it is a perfectly fine and fun movie that is bad but just enjoyable so i'm absolutely down for another one uh but yeah i guess uh moving on from there uh this next story actually just popped up uh at least on my radar uh, earlier today um and this involves the avatar sequels that have been in development for I guess going on a decade now. Um, but apparently for a while now, David Thewlis, um, who uh, was in, he was the villain in the first Wonder Woman. He was in the Harry Potter series. I guess he has been cast in uh, the Avatar sequels. He's gonna be playing a Navi. Um, but he, in an interview uh, this week, confirmed that he's not gonna be in Avatar 2, but he has filmed scenes for Avatar 3 because both films were being uh, shot back to back. Um, or like at the same time um, but yeah so his character is going to be in the third one and then they're planning on him being in the fourth and fifth one as well um, but I know that they're just they're sticking with the first uh, two sequels for now and if those do well then they'll move into four and five which is probably a good idea um, but yeah I think this is interesting uh, it's good to see that they're planning this far out um, I guess like Avatar is is what it is, um, but it's good to see that uh, the sequels kind of like have a roadmap. They know where they're going, and it's not just kind of like throwing something together. I'm still not crazy excited about seeing sequels to Avatar, um, but I guess this is an encouraging thing. And David Thewlis is a great actor, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. But what do you think about this, David? Yeah, um, I've only, I've seen some of Avatar. Um, I've not seen all of it. I, I watched it um during i was like in a car ride and it was just like on like the tv that was just like in front of me that was in the car yeah. <laughs> and so i was just kind of watching it and it was very small um and it looked fine to me um i think just the way this has been drawn out i don't really think anything is is given with when these movies are going to come out or if they're ever going to come out or when they come out, will people even care anymore? Because it was the biggest movie of all time when it came out. But now I don't think anyone really remembers it like that. And I don't think it's something that people are clamoring for anymore. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, how many of these they eventually turn out. So Yeah, Avatar was certainly hot in the moment, but it hasn't necessarily stayed there. It, yeah. it just kind of died out. So it'll be interesting to see, yeah. 
how many people come back to see sequels. But yeah, um, moving on from there, we're going to move over to the Planet of the Apes franchise. Um, so back when uh, Disney acquired Fox's assets, was it last year, late year before? I don't know. At some point in the past couple of years, um, one franchise that uh, they've brought up on a couple of occasions of wanting to explore more is the Planet of the Apes franchise. Um, and late last year, uh, we got confirmation that they were moving forward on a new Planet of the Apes film uh, uh, coming from the director of the Maze Runner series, Wes Ball. Um, and yeah, he was being interviewed uh, recently and he confirmed that his new film will be a continuation of the existing series um, that um, yeah, came out this past decade. Um, so he didn't necessarily say like at what time period this will be set in. So like, we don't know if this is like a direct sequel to War for the Planet of the Apes or if it's just like a sequel kind of like hundred years in the future that just happens to be in the same world. Um, so we don't know that yet, but it is, I guess, going to be a continuation of the same franchise, um, which I'm excited about. Um, I, I think we talked about it on the podcast when they initially announced this, and I was very vocal about not wanting it to be a reboot, um, because I think the franchise that they have is working great, um, and there's really no reason to reset that. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about this. I'm a little apprehensive about the director because I don't think the Maze Runner movies were all that great. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it and we'll see how it goes. What do you think about this, David? Yeah, I know there had been rumors that it was going to be some sort of soft reboot. Um, and I'm glad it's not because, yeah, like you said, I think the trilogy that we've gotten over the past decade or so is really, really good. Um, and I think there's still some interesting plot threads to mine there. Um, I, I hope that they don't try to remake the original like Tim Burton did. That was Tim Burton, right? In like yeah, yeah. early 2000s. Because um, that was not good. And I think we don't need to see, oh, wow, the humans are back again. And like, what happens then? I like, I think that's been done and kind of seen before. Um, so, so I think kind of a look at Caesar, uh, uh, but, but didn't Caesar have a kid or something? He had a son. Uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Has, um, I think it was Cor Cornelius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe kind of, he can kind of be kind of a passing of the torch to him and, and see some more, like, uh, of the transition between, it's a planet of mostly apes and some humans to a planet of, like, all apes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, but I guess moving on from there, uh, we have some just general other movie news that's kind of interesting. Uh, first of all, we have uh, confirmation that a new uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, Fiddler, on <laughs> we have a new Fiddler on the Roof movie coming. Um, so I don't know much about Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, I'm not big into musicals, uh, but David, uh, David is big into musicals, and you have seen Fiddler on the Roof. So uh, just in general, uh, I guess, what do you think about them making a new Fiddler on the Roof movie? Um, it's coming from director uh, Thomas Kale, who directed Fosse Verdon, which you watched, correct? Um, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess he directed the off-Broadway version of In the Heights um, and the like live recorded version of Hamilton that'll be hitting Disney+. Plus. Um, but aside from that, he hasn't really done much else. Um, yeah, what do you think about this, David? Yeah, so he, so he actually did both the off-Broadway and Broadway for In the Heights. Okay. Um, he was nominated for a Tony for that. Um, so yeah, he has obviously a very deep theater pedigree, um, and uh, he also did, he directed a Grease Live um, a few years back, uh, but but yeah, he doesn't have a ton of, of you know, or really any filmmaking experience. Uh, Fosse Verdon is an incredible, like, miniseries. Um, I know he was, like, an executive producer on that, and he directed some of the episodes, um, so, and that is a really, truly outstanding uh, series there. Um, I think I'm definitely, I'm a bit torn on a from the Roof remake, uh, cause the first is a classic. Um, I think it's one of the best movie musicals and just a really good musical in general. Um, and, uh, the character of Tevia, um, played by Topol in the original, um, that is like, that is like the definitive performance of that character. Um, so I think recasting that might be a little bit tricky, but you know, I think it's a story that definitely could be updated for modern day a little bit. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm definitely not against seeing a new one, so. 
Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not big into musicals, so I don't have a lot of thoughts on this. Um, yeah, I'm, I guess I am tentatively looking forward to it just because he seems like he's done some good stuff before and Fiddler on the Roof is a classic. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's exciting. Um, but yeah, moving on from there, uh, a while back, uh, we got the news that Scott Derrickson, um, who directed the first Doctor Strange movie and Sinister a few years back, um, he had parted ways with Marvel over um, working on Doctor Strange 2. And then the question became like, what was he gonna do next? And it looks like he has found his next project in the form of a sequel to Labyrinth, um, the, the cult classic movie starring David Bowie. Um, so there's, there's been rumors about them making a sequel to this for a long time. Um, and I guess it's just never really gotten off the ground, but now Scott Derrickson's on board. So I assume that we'll get this here in the next couple of years. Um, I, I'm kind of excited about it. I haven't seen Labyrinth in a long time. I think I watched it in like a middle school art class or something. Um, but yeah, I, I, and I remember enjoying it at the time. Uh, I'm a big fan of David Bowie and it'll be interesting to see who they cast in that role. Um, like who, who can they get to, to live up to <laughs> the style of David Bowie. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see how this develops. Um, and considering, I guess, how successful uh, the, uh, the Netflix series of The Dark Crystal was, mm -hmm. um, there, there is an audience for this. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. What do you think, David? So I, I never seen, uh, the original, um, I'm, you know, uh, confession on here. I'm a bit scared of Muppets in general. I like the Muppets and I like some of the Sesame Street Muppets, but just kind of puppetry in general, I'm a little bit tentative about it. You know, maybe it's some like deep seated fear from when I was a young child, but this is probably not something I would see just cause I don't like it. it scares me. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they continue to use uh, like puppets for most yeah. of the characters or if they do some sort of puppet CGI hybrid or whatever they end up doing. Uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting, uh, at least. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, and moving on from there, the last like bit of news that we wanted to just kind of briefly touch on um, is all this Batwoman stuff. So I haven't watched the Batwoman series. Uh, I believe it's on the CW. It's part of that whole... CW Arrowverse, um, but uh, Ruby Rose was cast in the role of Batwoman a while back, and they just finished their first season up um, this past, like earlier this year. Um, and yeah, news came out recently that Ruby Rose had left the title, the 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 lead role of the series, um, and it was kind of up in the air as to what they were going to do next. But now it's sounding like instead of recasting that role, they're just going to be bringing in a new character to be Batwoman. Um, which I, I think is a really interesting approach. Um, it's maybe not, it's, it's a risky approach um, because I think it's more so upends the story of what they had instead of just continuing with the direction they were going. So they kind of got to reshuffle a bit. And again, I haven't watched any of this series, um, but it'll, it'll be interesting to see how the story evolves from there um, and how audiences react to that. Um, because it, uh, from what I've gathered, it was a pretty popular show. People that watched it did enjoy it. Um, so we'll see, yeah, how it goes from here. Um, do you have any thoughts on this, David? Yeah. So I, I'm definitely on the uh, periphery of the CW Arrowverse now. I used to be big into it and was watching Arrow and the Flash all the time and stuff like that. But now I'm kind of a, a, uh, just watch the crossovers fan where, you know, every year I'll just kind of watch the big crossover that they have and then I'll just kind of catch me up on generally what's going on in, in these universe universes. Um, and yeah, so I had watched the pilot of Batwoman um, when it first came out and all of the stuff that she was in, in on the crossover. And I thought she was really good. Um, I thought she was like, I thought Ruby Rose acted it really well and was a good Batwoman. Um, I think kind of from the start, she had some kind of some problems there because she faced a lot of backlash when she was cast. Um, and, and I think it's something where I think her career was kind of starting to move into movies. Like I think she was in the Meg. Um, yeah, she was in the Meg. Uh, she had a role in John Wick chapter two. Um, okay. And yeah. Yeah. And so I think once you're on a show like that, you're kind of locked into it for a long time and it's kind of hard to do anything else. So I think she kind of realized it, it was more hurting her career than helping it maybe. Um, and so 
I think it kind of makes sense that she would maybe want out. Uh, but, you know, I think with all of, you know, the, the, the comic bookiness of these universes, they can be like, it's another dimension or uh, uh, Kate Kane just died or she changed faces or she changed names or something. And, and they can just kind of do just a quick rewrite and, and kind of retcon it there. So, you know, I think it's sad that she, she left under such like sudden circumstances, but, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll find a way to make it work. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they end up like doing a total rehaul of like the costume um, or and like make it a completely like different take on Batwoman or if they just kind of like swap in another character and have her keep doing the same stuff. Yeah, and I had heard that they had just introduced Bruce Wayne or like they had introduced Hush on the show. So like yeah. Hush is like he has the face of Bruce Wayne and impersonates him. So they have cast a Bruce Wayne in this universe. So yeah, it'll be... I think they set up a lot of things going into the next season and now they'll have to kind of change a lot of those things. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess from there, uh, we're just going to quickly jump into our main topic In our main topic this week. Uh, we just kind of wanted to talk about the movies that made us love movies, like the movies that got us into, into our, our film fandom and kind of just set us on course for where we are today. So David and I have uh, each made our own like little lists of just some of the, our, our first loves in terms of movies. Um, and yeah, I, I'll let you start first, David. Uh, what's one of the movies that got you into movies? Well, you know, they say you'll never forget the first time you fall in love. And the first time I fell in love with, with a movie was Back to the Future. Um, Back to the Future is a movie, I've, I, I'm sure I've talked about it on, on this podcast before. It's probably my, one of, it's one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie. Um, I, I don't even know how many times I've seen it. Um, I think it's just an absolutely timeless movie um, that doesn't really even fall into like a category of movies. And I don't really think has been repeated since. Like it's just, you know, it's a comedy, it's an action movie. Um, it's a time travel movie. Like it, 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 it's very, it's very kind of hard to pin down what it is, but all elements of it work um, and just kind it has, it, I think it works for kids because, you know, like that's when I first saw it. Um, but I just watched it a few weeks ago again and it's still work for me now. Um, so it's just, it's a great movie. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think much more needs to be said about Back to the Future. So Yeah, um, I guess uh, in terms of what movies that, uh, that I kind of fell in love with initially, uh, one that I have brought up on this podcast many, many times um is is the lord of the rings trilogy uh from wow. yeah, oh guess. Um, that's crazy. Was a I, guess. In there. I didn't i didn't know you were a fan that's why <laughs> um but yeah uh, the lord of the rings trilogy uh directed by peter jackson um first of all i'm just a big fan of the lord of the rings in general like i have a jrr tolkien tattoo it's like it, yeah i'm a nerd um <laughs> but these movies yeah they I like I think I saw them for the first time when I was like 11 or 12 and I think they were a little intense for me at that point in my life because I was just kind of like these are good but like this is kind of kind of yeah I, I think I was scared of like the Urukai and the and the goblins and such um, but then I came back to them uh, about the time that the first Hobbit movie came out and I just fell in love with them um, watched the movies over and over again um, read the books and just yeah kind of delved headfirst into the whole world of middle earth um and haven't really left since um so yeah lord of the rings i've talked about it at length before so you kind of know what i know what i'm trying to say here but yeah um i guess i'll, I'll throw it back to you david what's another movie that you love yeah so i think my my kind of taste in movies and the movies i was introduced to at a young age were obviously you know like shaped by my parents and a movie that my dad loves is Rocky. Um, and, you know, that's a movie that's kind of sparked this really long franchise that's still going on today. Um, but I, I think what kind of gets lost is just how good that first one is and kind of what a just an interesting self-contained story it is. Um, you know, it ends with, spoiler alert, Rocky losing, um, but it's just kind of the ultimate underdog story. Um, and with, you know, such appealing characters uh and and you know Sylvester Stallone 
was kind of an underdog himself when he wrote and starred in this. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's just, that's another movie I just kind of always go, to, go back to. And I think some of the, uh, you know, big inspiring moments of it can feel kind of cliche now because they've just been, you know, built on so much since then um, and, and kind of uh, beat to death by other, by other things. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, it's a great movie. Um, and, you know, it's a great sports movie. And uh, yeah, I think it's just, uh, it's pretty good. So yeah. Um, the next movie on my list is another one that I've talked about pretty extensively on this podcast. And that's uh, Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Um, came out in 2014, uh, directed by Alejandro Gonzalez in your E2. Um, and it's the first, like, while The Lord of the Rings were the first movies that I, like, really got into, Birdman was the first movie that I saw in a theater that kind of really opened me up to just movies as a whole and filmmaking as a whole and made me kind of, like, appreciate the craft of it um, just as much as, like, the story. Um, just because Birdman... Just the cast uh, with Michael Keaton, Emma Stone, Zach Galifianakis, uh, Ed Norton, um, just a whole bunch of big names in it, and they all bring their A-game. And I think all of them, like there were, I believe, four actors from this movie nominated for Oscars the year it came out. Um, I still think Michael Keaton should have won over uh, Eddie Redmayne, um, but I digress. Um, the movie did win Best Picture, which was the most exciting thing in the world to me at the time. Um, and yeah, I think it just really, it's, it's a very, it's a very excellently like made film. And the way that Alejandro Gonzalez and Yuri uh, shot the film uh, to make it all look like it's one continuous shot, um, it really kind of immerses you in that world and makes you feel like you're there with these characters experiencing all the mayhem and everything that's going on. And they're trying to throw together this, this Broadway production. Um, and it's a total mess and I love it. It's fantastic. And yeah, you should check it out. And I guess we, from there, we might actually just start trying to wrap it up just because I think our Zoom meeting is going to end here pretty soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this has been Cinebraskans, the Daily Nebraskan Entertainment Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Cruz, joined by my co-host, David Berman. And yeah, um, thanks for tuning in. See ya. See ya.